Good evening, my friends. Welcome back to Making Clouds with Mudflap. Thanks for sticking around for the three parts of this question and answer giveaway. Sorry for taking so long in the giveaway, but we have to get through this first, even though it is the weirdest thing talking about myself like this, and I wasn't, didn't realize it would open myself up so much like this. Not that I said I had anything to hide anyways, but it's been weird and after last night it's like oh my god I just ramble on and ramble on and go on about nothing I not about nothing but you know what I mean I just seem to do about 15 questions a night I still have 15 to do tonight so I think I'm gonna roll up a joint and uh, last night was like a half an hour late before I cut it down really bad and I did felt bad about cutting it down even though I really cut anything out of it just a lot of pauses and cough and then blah 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 so this time we're gonna be like last night we're gonna hopefully plow through it but even at 15 questions in a couple minutes each questions because some of them are pretty freaking intense questions I kind of flipped through them really quick to see to count how many I had here and just looked at them briefly and thought, oh there's a couple in there that are really gonna take me a few minutes plus not the, just that I mean just my regular time about talking about everything I should look at the clock here it's a little bit earlier tonight and I'm exhausted and I came home and I thought, I'm really not into filming this and answering and talking about myself and going through this tonight. I'm just, like I said, I'm just exhausted. It's been a busy week and it's been up late and, you know, but I had a pretty good night uh, at Pugs tonight. It, you know, just, uh, just, a, I had a good night with him. It was kind of fun and just talked about some shit and it was uh, cool. Anyways, it's not too late tonight, so we can whip through this hopefully fairly quick like half an hour and uh get through the questions so tomorrow we can do the freaking draw but i must say i'm touched by all the kind words you guys have really left it's just very kind of not very kind of it is very moving it, it it's touching and i want to thank you guys so much it makes me feel it's given me after reading the comments coming home tonight from bugs like I said, where I was tired, it's given me the inspiration to get up and just go and do this. You know, like I'm, yeah, yeah, let's go. Like, it, thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Because it is, I, I don't know, it's it's kind of a weird thing opening yourself up like that. Especially, it's one thing to do a, a question here and there, but to get a, a barrage of them and such good ones, too. It's like, wow, that's that's neat. I never would have thought I'd half ask a half of them, and I thought a lot of them would, yeah. Just cool. Anyways, I'm breaking up my last little bud of sour diesel here. It is. I can't even remember where I got that one from. Anyways, might even have been from the dreaded LP. But then again, it might not. Three albums that I listened to today. Uh, this morning, first one was uh, Credence by You Country. By You Country, sorry. I, I've loved Credence for years and just had, uh, wanted to hear it today and was flipping through and it just worked out that I got to, so yay for me. Second one was a little bit later in the morning, uh, plugging away in the office and uh, needed to get going a little bit quicker, so I threw on 10 Years After's Greatest Hits. Got to listen to a good majority of that. I've seen the newer version of 10 Years After at the London Blues Fest here in not here, but in London, and uh, actually I've seen them a couple times, and the, the young guitarist I got playing for him, pretty freaking smoking guitarist, sounded a lot like Alvin Lee, which is the whole idea, I think, anyways, and I'm not sure, no, that was Foghat, I was going to say, I thought I might have bought a new album from them, but no, that was the new Fog, one of the newer Foghat ones, uh, anyways, and the last one was Pussifer, I'll listen to that later in the day, uh, Conditions of My Parole, I like them, that's the dude from Tool, Maynard or whatever, all I can, yeah, I can, can, can never remember his full name, and i seen Tool once in concert, but he kind of was in the shadows and different concert, anyways, it smells nice. All right, let's get into these questions, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, lead foot online. Oh, yeah. I thought I had a question from you. You didn't. You just had some sound advice about the room. Yeah, we still have to paint this room, and Karen's got her cabinet she wants to put here for her dress and that. She's got this big cork thing that she wants to do there with a whiteboard. And I need the whiteboard for ideas and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's... We're not quite there yet. Karen has just decided on the color, and I said, well, with going on vacation and that, we're going to just have to maybe put the... Finishing this off till 
the new year. So, or when we get back, which will be end up being by the new year during the holidays. Anyways, Alex Benyon, been watching for six months now. I like your tats. Could you tell me more about them? Um, most of my tattoos are done by a gentleman named Mike Austin in London, Ontario. Uh, he doesn't do color anymore, and he doesn't take any new, um, I was going to say patients, new customers. Unless you're an existing one or related to somebody, it's pretty hard to get in. It's a nine-month waiting period. I think he's like 175 200 bucks an hour. Um, he's done most of mine. He did my back. Uh, my back took like 50 hours, and it won Best Tattoo in a competition in 1993 in Montreal, best back. Um, he's done a uh, hand poked one on my leg with his signature. He's done one uh, Japanese writing on my leg to dedicate my brother who committed suicide. I have a leg of mass. Uh, my other leg's got more Canadian theme, tip totem pole, uh, elk, uh, salmon, the Haida Indian um, wedding bands that Karen and I have. And yeah, so the most of them are done by Mike. I have a couple from a gentleman from England called Kevin Shercliffe. He did my tiger ripping through my skin and my owl on my leg, which he did in Montreal the one year that I won Bass Back. And yeah, so that's about my tattoos. Excellent question. Soul Talk, would you recommend cannabis to someone with lung cancer a certain way they should ingest it? Okay, um, Karen's mom passed away from lung cancer. My dad had lung cancer. They both went through different kind of treatments because they were different kind of cancers. Um, Karen's mom went more the uh, chemo and radiation way. My dad, I don't know if he had that, but he had his removed and he, he died from other things later on and Karen's mom died much quicker. We thought it was going to be the other way around, so... I would have wished I could have got that into either one of them. Lung cancer, I, I can't tell you if it would. I myself, from what I've seen, I would recommend to trying the RSO. If they're adverse to the THC, then the CBD um, version of it maybe, or suppositories uh, of that said thing, uh, adjusting it that way. I didn't think you could get off on it by taking it in a suppository, but as per a few videos I've seen recently, apparently it does affect you. So um, that's where I feel about that. That was Soul Talk. Terp Hog 710, when did you first smoke cannabis and what has been your favorite artist to see in concert? Well, I first smoked it when I was 13 and yeah. We've talked about that previously, last night. And my favorite artist to see in concert, I talked about some of my favorite artists. Like I said, uh, when, uh, if, we, if we look at it in my teenage years when I first started going to concerts, I mean, I was a big Kiss fan. Right? Yeah. And I always liked Kiss uh, growing up. And then I kind of got into my thing. And, and then uh, Ted Nugent. I've seen Ted Nugent six, seven, eight times now. Um, big into that for a while and then got, kind of went through a blues phase um, Seen Metallica a lot. Uh, Roger Waters though is one I consistently go or any Pink Floyd. I did miss David Gilmore recently, but Here's what it is. So That's that Excuse me while I lick my paper I always roll my joints with a filter in them. I call them a filter. Some people call them a crutch. Other things. I'm not bad at rolling them. I don't smoke a whole lot of them, so. Thanks, Terp Hog. Now this next one from Penny, Perry Art 420. Good question. It's a bit of a lengthy one here. Well, no, it's not a lengthy question, but I'm going to give you the whole premise of it because it sets it up very nice, actually. Perry has some very nice art. If you like to look at those kind of things, check out her YouTube channel, too. Well, in case I didn't leave that sneeze in just to see what I look like on camera, uh, that's what that little pause was there for. Oh, tickling the nose. Woo. Perry Art 420. Lately, there has been much drama in the cannabis community on YouTube, from clicks to trolls. It can be intense. 
We as stoners are supposed to support each other, work for the same cause, yet there continues to be a separation. If you could say something to everyone, to try to make them stop and think about it, and try to come together, what would it be? Now when I wrote that down, I thought, what a freaking awesome little premise in that, because there definitely is trolls. Anybody who's got a YouTube channel usually got them eventually. I myself don't understand it. If you don't like me, I'm not for everyone. I never was my whole life. I've been a different person. I've done my own thing. It's never stopped me. I've always, even when I was younger, going to movies or concerts or liking music. So if nobody liked it, I went myself. I went and did it. And I was always considered maybe a little different. And I always, yeah, I was. I had friends and stuff like that, but it's not like it, ah, it's just weird. So anyways, that's not where we were supposed to go with that. Sorry, Perry Hart. Um, what would I say to bring them together? Everyone, I think, has a different want out of this cannabis community. Um, there's the true lovers of the the plant and just want everyone to get along and what you're kind of striving for here but i don't i don't see it i've come from a small town and when i get into the bigger towns it just what we see as good and caring and sharing is sometimes looked at as greed and there's profit and i understand there's expenses and things like that too so but there is also those things greed and that and, and i I guess we have to accept everybody's got a different want for this plant right now, whether it's medicinally or recreationally, or if you just, you were involved with it and are just happy that things are changing and want to be on board to be, see, hopefully make the changes more. I see part of that in some of it too. And then I see someone who just want to outright boycott it and make sure it doesn't like, and I get that too, because it's not really a system that's working. It's more... Uh, oh, excuse me, I was going to sneeze again. Uh, it's more uh, restrictive and prohibitive and uh, just the category, or not categorizing, but I guess registering of everybody. Makes me wonder. A dude, I think, seen something on Facebook just uh, before I came on here about some dude being uh, impaired by his medicine, so... And I think it might have been in Kitchener or something. Uh, maybe not. I can't say that for sure. But anyways. Everyone's got to have their beliefs. And I guess we have to respect each other's beliefs. And we maybe don't need to step on each other's toes when somebody is trying to get their beliefs and say that it's wrong. And maybe support each other a little more that way. I try to. If I don't like somebody and I don't believe in what they're saying, I'm not going to step on them or say that they're wrong. Because I'm, who says what I'm saying is right? I'm not saying I'm the, I have the answers. I found what works for me, and I think that's the thing with cannabis. You do have to find that. I like to take it daily. I take my doses of RSO regularly so I can have my preventative medicine. I like that. I think it makes a difference compared to how I used to feel. Excellent question. Cannabis nerds, my buddy nerds. Where is the most adventurous place you ever consumed cannabis? Adventurous? When I was 20, I lived in Calgary. And I went to the top of Sulphur Mountain, I think, and smoked up there. I don't know if if that's adventurous. I kind of just went up there in gondola. It's not like I climbed up there. I guess the most daring place was in the airport when I was also 20 when I went out to Calgary and someone gave me some black ash and I smoked some black ash in the bathroom of the airport. Probably not too smart now, but back then that's what I did. And I want to say I did it on the airplane, but I honestly can't remember if I did it or not. I do remember doing it in the stall in the bathroom. Nice question. Dab Angel Live. Hi, Mindflap. My question would be, why do you use cannabis, medicinal or recreational, and why? Um, I use it both. 
I used to use it just recreationally and took the pills for all my various symptoms of arthritis and pain and inflammation and migraines, digestion, a uh, multitude uh, of things and more things that they wanted to put me on because of the way my health was. Uh, diabetes and stuff like that because it runs in the family and I was almost there with my blood sugars until I got on the cannabis. I do s still support support the recreational use of it because I myself would much rather get in a circle of people and share a joint than get in a circle of people and share a case of beer. I just have a much better time. There's a lot less uh, conflict. And it's just much more fun. Way more fun. And I want to love it. Very good. Dab Angel. Dilly. 118. Hey Muds, did you ever do bucket, bucket bongs? Holy, I used to do them terrible when I was younger. <laughs> I did one once with a younger guy, a buddy's younger brother. I gave him a ride home from work once and he was like, oh, you're not coming in for buckets. And I didn't know what it was. And this is, oh, this is going back 20 years. And I mean, I didn't really get into dabbing and all that and learn all about this stuff, cannabis, until I started to using it medically. Like I was just a joint smoker and then I had Big Bertha and that was it. And then all of a sudden I started learning this stuff and watching YouTube and learning all about it. And bam. Yeah. So buckets, no. Uh, one. I didn't really care for it. I get why people did it and the full intensity of it, but I do just like to enjoy it. I always did. Uh, I was one of those guys who always liked to have some instead of plowing through it. But, uh, it's a weird thing sometimes. Sometimes you plow through it. Somebody's Mama, have you ever grown and could you share some stories if you did? No. I had a plant in my room once and I was when I was younger and the RCMB came and that was part of the thing they took um so i was kind of always worried about it i did do one in my backyard many many years ago before my son got old enough to know anything about it or recognize it and got a good haul off it it was the hash plant and i got a good fucking 10 ounces off of the one plant just a little hedge other than that uh no i don't i will be soon i do throw a couple in at buddy's farm but i just throw them in the ground and maybe clip them once and mug and let them go Anyways, nice one. Ray, yay, yay, yay. Canada is my ultimate weedcation. If you could go anywhere in the world to get high and explore, where would it be? Well, I've already been to Jamaica, and I recommend that to anybody because that place is fucking cool. But a place that I've always wanted to go and get high, besides, it used to be Amsterdam, but not no much, so much anymore. I don't have that urge for it anymore. Don't know why. Just with the way things have changed and that, just doesn't seem like the place. Spain sounds like a pretty freaking cool place, and I think I'd like to maybe see that sometime. But I guess if the, if we go for this question, a place that's always been online would be Hawaii, because of smoking that Hawaiian that when I was younger in my smoking career. So, and it's just such a beautiful place, and my brother just went there, and it was a place my dad always wanted to go to. So, the islands. It's always an island, isn't it? Mr. Spark a lot. Sparks a lot. What is the weirdest thing you ever smoked from? I'm not a, a guy who really smoked from weird things. I think when one time, I think I was 14, went to Michigan. I think it was Gross Point, Michigan for a hockey tournament. I stayed with this family and this kid, dad, had some home growing and we smoked a joint that we rolled out of his mom's, uh, I'm not sure the term, them fucking tube things that the girls used to have, Kotaxer? Uh, yeah. Anyways, the perfumey thing, we fucking filled it and used that, and, uh, but we did it, and I think his fucking, like, nine-year-old brother was fucking smoking it with us, too, but that was uh, the weirdest thing I ever smoked out of. No fruit. Never used fruit. I've always had papers. 
excuse me while I'm paying all about ripping the ends off. And I will shuffle this around and get Karen to jostle these out here. We're going to take them out and move them all around. Now I wrote this one down. And when I did, uh, Jeremy Richardson. Jeremy is a, is a musician. Uh, he has a YouTube channel too. He's fucking awesome guitarist like T-Tel Tim. If you get a chance to check out his stuff, he's fucking pretty good. Now he's out there. Um, check it out. If you had to classify yourself as a canine, what breed would you be and why? Like I said, good questions. <sighs> classify myself. What breed would I prefer to think of myself as? Um, I'd like to think of myself as more like a husky or a, a shepherd, you know. Uh, but you know the thinking type dog uh, something that's always going but I'm probably more bigger and cumbersome like a St. Bernard or let's say a Bouvier I think I'm probably more like my old Bouvier we some people used to say that with big floppy hair uh, kind of active but also uh, no, he wasn't as active. He especially is. No, I can't say that because I like his protectiveness. I love his familyness, and it'd have to be more like, uh, yeah, it's hard to say something like that. I love the terrier too. Like, I'm thinking more like a terrier, more that kind of active, thinking, uh, obsessive kind of. Yeah, good one, good one, Jeremy. That's that's me. I do kind of when I get into something, I obsess up. OCD, Karen likes to say. And she laughs at me a lot. I'm sure some of my other friends have the same things with their wives. But sometimes I say laughing, but to me, this is laughing to Karen. You guys know what I mean. Your wives laugh at you too, don't they? A Cody, a Cody Martina. This is a gentleman I believe who knows my boy, as I so refer to him. How did you decide your name, Making Clouds? And it's really weird that somebody that young would ask that question. It's a cool question, I thought. Um, that was the hardest thing that maybe uh, held me off from making my channel for maybe a month was. Using didn't want to necessarily use my mud flat name because it was my nickname growing up, but I was mud flat on the THC show with Pug and just how everybody knew me online or and and yeah online and that so I kind of just stuck with it so I didn't just want to be mud flat you know it just doesn't sound right so I like to make clouds so I somehow incorporated that and just one day it was just like yeah that's what we're gonna do it. When I mentioned it to the wife, she goes, yeah, you got it. Like, that's that's the one. And, and stuck ever since. And I'm kind of glad because it is very different. Because when people first refer to me, they don't know to call me Mudflap or they call me Making Clouds. And now they call me Muddy or Muds or whatever, you know. Just nice you're hanging out. Okay, we're getting on 20 minutes. One, two, three. Fucking not too bad. Not too bad tonight, guys. I'm kind of whipping through them. Hopefully these ones don't take too long. These Nuts, 1965. Well, These Nuts, 1964. Um, I know this you watch, buddy. Just teasing. When you have a real nice cola bud, do you start at the bottom or the top? I see, like, Token Daily and everybody break that tip right off the top. But myself, I work my way up the bottom and save the top for last. As you've seen, this, my last little butt of that is, like, the biggest, baddest call. I don't, I put that one aside for last. I don't know why. It's just the way I've always been. If it's going to be my last butt of that, it's going to be a good one. Especially when you got a first bag. You don't need to be diving right in and jumping on the biggest fucking piece. But see my, my obsessiveness with having that ripped off? At least I clean up my mess though, because I don't think Karen be too kind if I come into her area here. She's doing some more uh, crafty stuff, making some more gallery glass. 
Oh, 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 I'm making a mess. Oh no, now she's gonna know I was showing stuff. Trying to make some sort of cloud designs too. She's freaking right on top of it, guys. And I think somebody messaged her on Instagram that she said she has to go look at, so I'm not sure, but Easton8524. What's the best minor hockey moment growing up? Cheers from Ottawa. Well, cheers, Easton. I've been to a game in Ottawa. The Monster Canadians lose there one day. Fun town. I pushed the wife around on the canal because she does not skate. And it was near the end of the season and it was slushy and I worked my fucking bag off that day. Excuse my language, but I still had fun. That would have been cool with a GoPro. Anyways, my best minor hockey moment. Like, I've, I'd have to say... I did play a little bit of competitive hockey, nothing more like, like junior or anything like that. Whenever I tried out for anything, I was more, as I got older and more aggressive, it was more of a that kind of game instead of the skill which I should have stuck with. But just before, no, I think I, yeah, I was smoking because, all right, this is a bit of a story. I'm going to try and whip through it real fast because we're getting on to time here. Uh, one question after that. Um, let's uh, answer this one first from Big Len, and then we'll go to this one and fin finish her off because that's a, a nice little story, actually. Thanks, Easton. 852. This is Big Len. What is the best way to get rid of mites, bro? I'm not a grower, and I have heard from some people, and that is to spray like soapy water underneath the bottom of the leaves and I and like I said I don't grow and I can't honestly say if that's true or not but that is all I can say I, I hopefully soon I will have well no because then that means I have a problem with mites but I'm gonna have to start paying a little bit more attention to that as I learn about this but thanks good question I wish I had better knowledge of it for you all right last one uh, what is my best minor hockey moment? Okay, I played uh, on the competitive team. The last year I played on competitive, before I never played anymore because I dislocated my finger in grade 10 in gym right when hockey tryouts were and I was pretty much on the team but I dislocated it and then I ended up playing house league that year and had more fun because I wasn't really going anywhere with it at that point. I wasn't dedicated or smart enough to know to train or to do things and I realized that when I went for the junior B tryouts that year just about made it but heard them say well the difference between guys who make it and guys who don't are ones who train and I did not I was getting into the, the smoking and took it over really not took it over I just didn't do what I had to but this involved training this thing okay let's get into this story here uh, they had this tournament in Mount Bridges and I didn't realize it until later playing there as an adult that it was the same arena because it seemed so far away when I was uh, 13, 14, 14, yeah. Um, we pl played in this tournament, and we were, were allowed in as a team on the American. It was a Can-Am tournament, and there was teams from the States and teams from Canada. We played on the American side against the Canadian teams because they just someone backed out from the American side, and they need someone to fill in. So I had been jogging, like, probably a mile for a month, like, four or five times a week. I'd get, do it at night or whenever, and I was pretty adamant about doing that. And I didn't think anything of it at the time either, but it was like at the accumulation of the end of the season, and we went and went into that tournament, and I had like my best tournament. I went out the first game and got a hat trick, and then I got kicked out later in that game, and they were gonna kick me out of the tournament, but um, I, try, I had to talk to the board or whatever and I told them, well, you know, like, come on, I'm not that type of player. Fucking buddy fucking slew footed me and then he fucking went at me. I was just defending myself. I said, I fucking got a hat trick in the first two fucking periods if I played that way, blah, blah, blah. He was trying to take me out, so they allowed me back in. Which is kind of weird because I was kind of on the American side, and I think, anyways, not going to say what they thought I was American, but that eh, joint lasted just a long time. So anyways, I played in the next game and did really good. I uh, got a couple of goals and an assist, and then the third game, even though uh, 
I think we lost it. Um, I still got a few points. And then they had this all-star game at the end of it where they took a couple people from each team. So we got together at the end and played a, an all-star game. And I got picked for the all-star game, which was kind of different because then I went from being this kid on my own team to going in this dressing room with a whole bunch of Americans. And it was really kind of weird because like we were always... This, seemed to be the better teams and more I know about hockey this was quite a while ago but they always won with the better equipment and all the nice stuff it seemed they'd come over from Michigan and that and I don't know it just seemed like they had all the newest and nicest stuff but here we were with this crappy old equipment and it's playing the old hockey game anyways freaking awesome question Easton 8524 it has been a half an hour I'm sorry guys and I'm really freaking Stoked that you guys stuck it out with me that whole time. Uh, you pulled, pulled a lot of my heart out. Uh, you really had me thinking there earlier today. And like I said, I was just exhausted. But thanks for fucking picking me up and getting me through this. We will have the draw on Saturday. See you then. Be proud of your clouds. Cheers.